In this video, we are going to go over the top three biggest mistakes I made on Amazon FBA with my online arbitrage business in 2022. You're definitely going to want to stay and listen to all three because we might get to number two and you'll be like, what? Isn't that his biggest mistake? But no, it was not my biggest mistake. So let's get right into it. The first mistake that I made on Amazon in 2022 was only selling high ASP items a majority of the year. So for those who don't know, ASP means average selling price. And my average selling price throughout the year often was higher than $150 sale price per item. So why is this even a mistake you might ask? And also why would I even want to sell high ASP items in the first place? So the reason this is an issue is because back when I was selling books, I was selling anywhere between three and 600 books a month and never having any kind of account health issues with any of those items. With the items that I was selling this year though, I might sell anywhere between two and 500 units a month, but they're higher ASP items and items that are more likely to have customer issues or IP claims. And so I knew coming into this year that selling volume on Amazon helps your account health, but I don't think I realized the gravity of it. And I also don't think I realized how much volume is necessary in order to actually help your account health. For example, a new Amazon account can't really take too many account health issues before it gets quote unquote in the yellow or gets suspended for the most part. But as an Amazon account sells more and more units, preferably hundreds and thousands of units, an account can often end up taking more account health issues and therefore your margin of being able to have a cushion for yourself account health wise goes up. So coming into this year, I thought I was doing volume with my 200 to 500 units per month sold. And in reality, that is not that much volume when it comes to the account health game for Amazon. If I were to go back to the very beginning of 2022, I would mix in some items that are lower ASP. That way I can have more units sold in my account. The reason that I sell a lot of high ASP units is because in my eBay to Amazon business, I do find a lot of one-off items, but they are one-offs that I can replenish. And so it'll be a $130 buy cost unit that I can sell for $230. And so instead of doing one-offs, purchasing for $20 and selling for $32, I can do a one-off of a higher ticket item and still make 30, 40, 50, 60, $70 profit per unit. So the mistake here was not to just do high ASP units, but also mix in some things that are lower ASP, that way I can boost my account health. And as we get into the next two mistakes that I made, you'll realize more and more why this ended up being an issue for me. My number two biggest mistake selling on Amazon in 2022 would be purchasing items that are incomplete and selling them on Amazon. So let me explain. I have sold a lot of used items on Amazon in 2022. I'll sell thermal printers, I'll sell docking stations, I'll sell calculators, I'll sell lots of different things like that. And some of these items need certain cords or need certain extra parts or certain accessories in order for the customer to actually use them. And while I was sourcing from eBay to Amazon, I found that oftentimes purchasing the accessory was a huge, huge, huge discount over purchasing something with all of the accessories. So putting it on paper and purchasing for that discounted price on eBay and then selling on Amazon, even at a discounted price, looked like it was going to be massive, massive ROI and a huge opportunity. And so in my head, I thought, okay, while well, I'm discounting it 20 bucks, 30 bucks, the customer gets a discount and they can use that $20, $30 to go buy a cord for their item and I can make my money as well. But in reality, how that actually goes is the customer gets the item and they absolutely hate you because they wanted to use their docking station that day, but they don't have all the parts and they either leave you a negative feedback or they return it or in extreme cases, they leave you a counterfeit claim. So after several months of doing this, I was looking at my return rate and it just continued to go up and up and up. My return rate was over 30%. So these high return rates were really hurting my cash flow. I would sell an item, it would go to the customer, the customer would get it and be mad, they would return it, and sometimes it would take two, three weeks to even get the item back. And then sometimes Amazon would receive it and deem it as unfulfillable. 
And so they would send it back to me, which would take another several weeks, most likely. And then me listing stuff takes a long time. And so it was just really, really bad for cash flow on top of other things. And it's crazy that it took me this long, but one day I sat down and I lost my USB cord for my thermal printer. And I'm like, hmm. This is probably what my customers feel like. I need to stop doing that. I realized between the return rate and making my customers angry and making my cash flow worse, I definitely need to stop doing that. So that was my number two biggest mistake selling on Amazon in 2022. My number one mistake in 2022 was not paying enough attention to the brands being on listings while sourcing my products. Here's what ended up happening. A couple times I was sourcing and I would look at the offers count on Keepa and I would see that oftentimes there was only one or two or three sellers on the listing and then it would go out of stock or those second and third people would go out of stock and then it would go back to one. And so I was just a little too over eager to make purchases and in my brain I was thinking oh wow, people are hopping on that listing and they're just going out of stock so quickly. This item is selling super quickly. I gotta hop on this. But no, I misread that data and I should have looked at all of the sellers who are selling that item and seen, hey, look, the brand is always on this listing. They are trying to get sales. No, those people weren't selling out. They were getting IP claims. And so because of this mistake, I ended up getting two IP claims. These IP claims ended up making my account health much, much worse and ended up making it so that it was harder for me to continue scaling while feeling safe with my Amazon store. And so it influenced me to slow down my growth and take some money out of the business. So this definitely hurt my progress and my profits for the whole year because I could have kept scaling and staying at a high level. But when you have that many IP claims on your account, it's hard to feel safe with everything everything that's going on. So thankfully those have fallen off my account and are no longer part of my direct account health. But my biggest mistake this year was definitely not paying enough attention to the fact that brands were on listings. This is the easiest way to avoid IP claims, in my opinion, on Amazon. So my top three mistakes that I made on Amazon in 2022 was not selling enough volume and neglecting those lower priced items that can give me a lot of sales and boost my account health. And number two, selling items that customers just aren't gonna want and making there be issues for me and cash flow issues for me. And number one, not paying attention to the fact that there are brands on these listings and they don't want you to sell on those listings. And so taking a little bit more effort and making sure that brands aren't on the listing and that people aren't getting IP claims really goes a long way and can actually make you a lot of money indirectly in your Amazon FBA journey. So hopefully this was helpful. And if the whole eBay to Amazon thing does sound intriguing to you and you've wanted to get into it but didn't know where to start, I do have a free resource down in the description that gives an overview of how you can actually get started and what it takes to do this business model. But Anyways, hope you guys have a great rest of the day and take care.